to Radius or to Sharp Edge? Uh, again, this is kicking around and seems to be the million dollar question. I honestly thought this was put to bed a long time ago. So I thought I'd do a video and break down the what, whys and hows uh, and hopefully people can understand uh, when is best to use the Sharp Edge versus when is best to use a Radius. Because uh, I, I get a lot of misconceptions, people bringing up, you know, plain wings and, you know, you know crank radiuses and so on. Um, firstly, the, the plane uh, itself in a commercial liner is um, more about stresses and lift. And, and the faster a plane becomes, the less they're about lift, the more they're about drag coefficients and streamlining. So we look at anything that's supersonic and they get very, very sharp for obvious reasons. And as far as the crankshaft goes, the bigger the radius, the stronger the crank obviously gets because we're adding surface area to those two converging forces. Uh, so th th that's a real obvious one. But in a port or an induction or intake, we're all about flow and stress really isn't um, something we want to focus on. We're more focused on uh, boundary layers and the drag coefficient of of what we're doing. So if it's an intake port, we want to reduce the drag coefficient of the port as much as possible because this allows us to get more air into the engine. More mass means a bigger bang. The first area you'll always need a radius is our transitional area, our low speed to high speed, our high pressure to low pressure. This is always a must and, and the radius is very important for obvious reasons. We are able to pull molecules from a, a bigger fan, a bigger area. This allows for a far more stable flow. But, and there is a big but here, this radius in a primary induction length, when we have a valve opening and closing, is a limiting factor because we have sonic waves and pressure waves that move up and down this intake runner. So on a constant velocity, one directional flow, the bigger radius will always win. But in a cylinder head, in a primary induction length, when we have a gated mechanism, meaning an on-off switch, your valve, where we create these pressure waves and sonic mechanisms, we want the radius not so big. And by that I mean we need the radius to be the right profile to control that vena contractor so we don't create separation but not too big that as this wave comes up, it doesn't get washed out. Because remember, the bigger the radius, the more molecular density we have here, the more atoms we have in here to be affected by that pressure wave. And that pressure wave has X amount of energy. So the more molecules we'll expose it to, the more we wash that signal out. So that's one area we obviously need to control the radius. And this is why radial profiling and primary induction length is so important. Now if we look at high speed to high speed, so like a port divider, there's no change in acceleration of the air velocity. Well, very little when compared to a planum versus a primary induction length. So this air velocity is fairly stable. We're going to be in excess of 350 feet per second, just even on our averages. So this is where a knife edge will be superior for many reasons. Even if we just look at a constant flow, not a bi-directional me mechanism, which I'll get into a little bit later. But on a constant flow, this boundary layer is directly related to the airspeed in that port. So the less molecules we have to move out of the way, less actual load we put into the circuit, meaning, remember, atoms are interacting with each other like a bounce ball. They will bounce off the walls and it's the other molecules that align them. And we see this in uh, shear stress development of fluids. They, they layer. And we see that in a fully formed uh, laminar flow. We'll get a, uh, basically, a profile like so. Sorry, in the port. Meaning fast to slow. That's because the molecules on the wall are obviously still. They slow the next ones down a little bit and so on and so on and so on and vice versa. These molecules in the center of the port are flowing much faster. And the closer we get to the wall, the more they slow down. So now if we look at a high speed to high speed with a broad nose divider, we're gonna see, we're gonna get molecule stacking on top of it. 
we're gonna get a high pressure, low velocity area around it. And what it's gonna do is try and separate the air. It's, it's gonna try and push the air away, creating these actual loads, which will actually create restrictions in the cross-sectional area because we're gonna get boundary layer thickening. And again, that is relative to how fast our airspeed is going. At 350 feet per second, it might not be too bad. But once we start accelerating that air up to our 690, 700 feet per second, it's only going to get wider and it's only going to choke the port as far as how much mass density we get into the cylinder. The next problem we have is that this isn't a constant flow. It's a variable velocity and it also has a velocity ramp. Uh, similar to something like this. This is what the intake velocity profile is going to look like. So we're pretty much going from stationary as the valve opens by mid lift and around that, you know, 72, 75 degree of bore stroke, we're at peak velocity and then we're going to obviously slow back down as the valve closes. So now if we look at the broad nose divider on the opposite direction. So Ignoring the sonic mechanism, ignoring the pressure waves, just looking at the overlap mechanism. So in other words, you, when you hear a choppy V8, they're choppy because they're blowing air back up into the intake. We don't have enough of that ram air mechanism. We don't have enough velocity yet at lower engine speeds and lower piston velocities. So we actually push the air back up into the intake because we don't have that inertia mechanism. And this will cause air to turn in on itself with a radial divider rather than a knife edge divider because it'll create a low pressure as the velocity shoots past it, it'll create a low pressure here and that'll tend to turn the air in on each other, which will cause turbulent flow above the divider, which is not what we want. Obviously we want to streamline the flow as much as possible because this only creates drag and it also affects any of our ram air mechanisms and so on. So now if we look at the sharp divider in the reverse direction, again, high velocity to high velocity, we'll see that we're able to merge those velocity streams together from two into one very easily with far less turbulence at the end of the divider. And this will always make more horsepower. So again, high speed to high speed, sharp, low speed to high speed, we want a radius and we want to control that radius depending if it's an, a primary induction length. If it's on the front of a turbo or something like that, we're not too fast. But if it's in a bi-directional wave mechanism like our primary induction length, we definitely want a sharp divider because this will obviously control the boundary layer a lot better and also in the reverse directional flow and our pressure wave mechanisms will also uh, function a lot better with a sharp divider.